What's up YouTube? Have you wondered why DaVinci Resolve is absolutely taking the world by storm right now? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and I have been using DaVinci Resolve for years, long before this current uptick in celebrity YouTubers using it. I've also taught tons of other people to use it because it is just that good that I want everyone to learn it and know about it. And so I've taught a lot of people how to use it. Now, when I first learned about DaVinci Resolve several years back, I was just shocked. <laughs> I was completely shocked by it and I couldn't understand why everybody wasn't already talking about it because it was just amazing. Well, it took several years for people to kind of catch on, but in the last year we have seen so many major YouTubers. And I'm not talking about piddly little YouTubers like me. I'm talking about major YouTubers with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers switching over to DaVinci Resolve for their editing workflow. And when you start seeing that happen, that makes you sit up and go, hey, what's going on here? Why is everybody ditching Premiere Pro and Final Cut? You ditched the gear. Well, I've broken this down into four reasons why I think people really switch to DaVinci Resolve. Switch? And why maybe you should as well if you haven't already. So the four reasons are price, stability and performance, compatibility, and workflow. Those are good reasons. And we're going to talk a little bit about each of these in this video so you can kind of understand where I'm coming from. All right, so let's get price out of the way first because this is the obvious one. And if this is what's important to you, then it probably won't matter how the other ones go because the price for DaVinci Resolve is zero dollars for a version that is anything but basic. Now there is a studio version that costs $300, but the regular version will do pretty much anything that anyone needs it to do who's not working for a real production studio. That's really what the studio version is made for. Now compare that price of $0 or free to Premiere Pro, our old friend from Adobe, which costs at least $20 a month if you just want Premiere Pro and over $50 a month if you would like the entire Creative Cloud suite of apps. Now when you start comparing those things, um, well, free starts to sound pretty dang good rather than spending, you know, $600 a year. That's too expensive. And free is even pretty good when you compare it to the single purchase license for Final Cut Pro on desktop, which is around $300 for your single purchase license. And then of course, Final Cut has added in the iPad version as well, but that comes in at a monthly subscription of around $5 a month. So free starts to sound really good, or even the $300 for the studio version doesn't sound too bad. Works. Let me be really clear, just again, that you don't need the studio version to be able to use DaVinci Resolve for professional video editing. The free version comes fully packed, fully featured. Now you wonder how can this happen? Blackmagic follows a model pretty similar to what Apple does with a lot of their products, and that is that they sell hardware and they give the software away. Now Apple doesn't give Final Cut Pro away, but they do give away their operating system, they do give away their working suite, they give away a lot of software in order to sell hardware. And Blackmagic's doing the same thing. They sell cameras and color grading panels and audio panels. They sell some really high-end expensive editing equipment. And when they do that, they also give away the studio version for free. So a lot of people who are editing in the studio version of DaVinci Resolve didn't actually pay for it directly either. They bought some hardware and then they got the studio version for free. Okay, so cost is a big reason, but there's a lot of people out there that are still paying for Creative Cloud, but using DaVinci Resolve. Why would they do that? They're paying for Creative Cloud so they can get the other apps, things like Photoshop and Illustrator and Lightroom. But they still have Premiere Pro, so why are those people switching? Well, that brings us to the second reason, which is really important, and that is stability and performance. You know, Premiere Pro is just riddled with stability problems. It crashes all the time. You save so much of your time and effort by having less crashes in DaVinci Resolve. Does DaVinci Resolve never crash? No, of course, it crashes sometimes. All video editors do tend to crash once in a while, particularly if you're running them on a system that's not quite capable of running them. But it crashes so less frequently and is so much better at auto-saving than Premiere Pro that you just don't end up losing nearly so much work. And on the performance side, you save so much time in rendering because it can render so fast. I've especially found this to be true on the Apple Silicon machine. Speaking of Apple Silicon machines, let's talk about Final Cut Pro's stability and performance. Final Cut Pro is notoriously stable and has great performance because Apple's making the hardware that runs it and the software. And so when those two things are combined, they run really well. So DaVinci Resolve, of course, isn't quite as stable or quite as great at performance 
as Final Cut Pro is. So why are those people switching over to DaVinci Resolve? Well, that brings us to the third reason, which is compatibility. DaVinci Resolve is available on Mac, Windows, Linux, and iPad OS. Everywhere. Making it the most compatible video editor of any of the ones on the market. And so if you need to work with others, DaVinci Resolve is an awesome place to be because it doesn't matter what system they're working on, you will be able to work with them. And DaVinci Resolve takes this one step further by offering a cloud service that allows you to actually work collaboratively in real time on projects, which is mind blowing to me. Now, as a solo man team, this isn't something that I need to use, but I still find it incredible that they're able to offer that. And so compatibility is a huge and major reason and can save you so much in time and effort. Speaking of saving yourself in time and effort, let's go down to the fourth reason. And this is one that I think is the thing that brought me in and that is workflow. The workflow. I love it how Blackmagic who makes DaVinci Resolve has this all lined up for you in the tabs along the bottom. You can do everything that you need to do in DaVinci Resolve. Whereas if you were working in Premiere Pro, you would need to round trip your project several times. You would need to edit in Premiere Pro, go into After Effects for your effects and your animations, then go into Audition for your audio. And then if you really want a good color, you would even round trip it through DaVinci Resolve itself and back into Premiere Pro in order to get your color grading done. That's crazy. And that is just so much time and effort and craziness just to get a project done, which makes Adobe look absolutely silly compared to DaVinci Resolve where you can do everything right there within one app. You just go through, you cut, you edit, you do your effects and animations, you do your audio, you do your color and you export. And it's all right there laid out for you, saving you so much time and effort and just making more sense in your brain. And we all know that editors are busy and could use a little bit more time in their day. This is something that even Final Cut can't come close to, causing you to have to round trip through motion and through logic if you want to get your project where you really want to be. And of course, round tripping through DaVinci Resolve if you want the best color that you can have. And so you don't sacrifice anything with DaVinci Resolve. In fact, you gain a lot in terms of your time and the quality of your videos and what you're able to produce. So do I recommend switching over to DaVinci Resolve? Of course I do because it is absolutely amazing. I've been using it for years, but let's talk about one other really important thing and that is learning curve. Switching an application can be hard. Now, like I said, I've taught DaVinci Resolve to many, many people. And so I think that if you have a basic understanding of video editing, DaVinci Resolve is pretty easy if you're switching over from one of these other apps. If you don't have a basic understanding of video editing, it's going to be hard for you no matter what. So you might as well start with DaVinci Resolve, which is both the best app and the most affordable. But there are things that just kind of get you stuck, particularly when it comes to Fusion and Fairlight and some of those more really advanced topics. But fortunately, there are people here on YouTube like Casey Ferris and Mr. Alex Tech that have basically covered every topic there is to cover on DaVinci Resolve. And so they've got you covered. You will be able to learn it without any problem at all. It might take a little while like learning anything new does, but they've got you covered in order to learn that. Now for the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve, that's a little bit newer. We've had it for less than a year. And so I went ahead and I created a beginner's course for the iPad version. You can find links to that along with my other courses in the description below. And speaking of below the video, now I wanna hear from you. I wanna know, have you switched over to DaVinci Resolve from something else or are you thinking about switching over? Also, do you call it DaVinci or Resolve when you're shortening it? Because it seems like people do both and I'm not sure which one is correct. Okay, we'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.